let me get that list out now again because I was checking the links but it seems the link was right so and the time seems okay so I have Anthony Green and Nikki Williams and Kendra Douglas oh, oh, Nikki Williams. Ali Kimberly Nigel Weston and Sunday Ramaji Oh, I, we don't know that last name, I don't think. No. Okay. So Nikki, Nikki works with me and she might be at another meeting and hoping to catch up on it after. I'm not sure. Okay. She wasn't right. at it. Okay. So no, why, don't we, why don't we just go around and just do a little check-in? And I mean, that's the purpose of these chats. We had one this morning with the UK, uh, at least morning for us, late afternoon. Well, not late afternoon, but afternoon for them. Uh, start of a new day for you. So, um, and we have a few things we'd we'd like to share with you, but for the most part, it's kind of like where where are you? And I know in New Zealand, we've been stunned by the fact that uh, is it tomorrow or the next day you get uh, a new uh, an official? I, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just sorry. I'm just looking at a message from Tony because I did speak to him today, and mm -hmm. I'm wondering if he's uh, won't be a sec, uh, just having a, uh, a link issue. Won't be a mo. Um, the uh, yes. So everyone here the same. And um, it has really brought to the fore though that whole issue of um, on on a number of levels. Hate speech, I guess, is one. Just the corrosive and. Um, powerful influence it won't be one sec hi tony are you trying to get into the meeting yeah yeah look i'll, I'll get uh meredith to send you a link direct um yeah there might be a wee snafu okay, okay. cheers now okay. bye i don't know if you heard that we snafu yeah <laughs> very technological language yeah, that's right. Good Second World War kind of. Um, yeah, so, but it has really brought a number of things to the fore for discussion. Again, uh, just how polarised um, some of the language and attitudes have become and how kindness, particularly, which was one of her mot motivating kind of messages, mm -hmm. has, has, has seemed to have been equated somehow to a threat, you know, um, yeah, it, it, quite extraordinary. Yeah, I know that uh, a tweet, not a tweet, uh, a Facebook page um, or a posting went up um, about her from us, uh, thanking her. And boy, we got slammed a couple times uh, for being kind in our message. So, yeah, because kind has somehow become a political yeah. uh, byword for woke. Woke has become somehow, um, you know, a denigration of all that might be good or that it only belongs to one political spectrum. And so the thing I've really noticed is that, you know, the, reinforcing the message that kindness doesn't belong to the left or the right or upside down or in between. It is a human act that is not defined by politics. So the charter and the, of course the um, plays very nicely into framing that you know a way that's kind of um, yeah transcends those differences. Ah, hi Tony. Well, Good to see is, you. Some some sort of glitch somewhere, but anyway, hi. Good. We were just checking in. So um, oh, good. Okay, and Sandy, welcome. Um, thanks. I was obviously on some waiting on some other link. Wow. Well, okay. As was I. As was I. Yeah. Was it, did did yeah. you have That's a chance it. to share with one another, or I'm I'm no, just no, we can, we, they we weren't allowed like, into the room. Oh. Yeah, well, it was a it was a link that said that you hadn't started the meeting. So okay. Yeah, Merida sent us another one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we check in? And just, uh, Nigel, we'll let you go first. Just like what's happening in your world, um, and uh, we do have a visitor today uh, from Compassionate Australia. <clears throat> and so, if you can just kind of identify where you are in New Zealand, that would be helpful. 
Uh, maybe Terry, you know everyone who's on the call. I don't know. No. 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 Okay. No. Well, then in that case, it would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll start then. I'm I'm in Christchurch um, in New Zealand, obviously, um, and I uh, work at the city council in Christchurch, um, and I attended one of the courses last year um, at the um, for the uh, society and. Um, enjoyed listening to that and getting good perspective on on how things go because in, in my work I'm trying to create spaces for public spaces trying to create public spaces and that's um, needing to take into account all sorts of needs and perceptions so um, yeah I'm finding this really good and wanting a new language and a new way of approaching um, things which isn't uh, all uh, war and battle <laughs> focused in the language. Great, so welcome. And Tony. Uh, also in Christchurch, as is John, so we're a, a bit uh, <laughs> overdoing it on the regional representation. Um, I'm one of the sort of co-founders of what we call, what we now call Mahia Te Aroha, Action, the Compassion. We started off with the title, the Christchurch Invitation, after I'm a member of the Muslim community. And uh, in one year on from the attacks, we, a small group of us asked where we could go, how we can take this forward, looking at the, the wraparound of compassion um, and uh, working with city council with a lot of support from the, the former mayor, Leanne. Um, we were then offered, I'm hesitant to say gifted, but the, 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 the Maori advisors, the Naitahu Maori advisors at city council, sort of offers us the name Mahia Te Aroha to action the compassion, which seemed to capture what we were trying to do to try to create inclusive conversations um, to look at compassion and so on. Uh, last year in October, we had the first, I'm always hesitant to use the, the Maori terms because I think that there's a bit of a, personally, I sense there's a bit of a, a tendency to take the Maori terms uh, and perhaps not get the Maori essence um anyway uh so we had the first sort of hui gathering of a, a co-created gathering by two schools to which about over 50 students came from different schools around Christchurch and Canterbury the surrounding region on the idea we took the idea of the word Turangi Waiwai which is in a sense a place to stand and we talked about belonging what does it feel like to belong um when have you belonged and when have you not felt that you belonged and what is the difference and how can we can work to that? So the, the, the underlying theme of that was um, to have challenging conversations in safe spaces. Uh, and we're now starting to have, uh, working on trying to get the, the next development, that hopefully in term two this year with schools um, and to increase the number of people involved in that. Uh, that's part of the work, but there's there's a lot a lot more we're doing. But it really is about it's talking to something intangible, which if you haven't got it, will actually destroy you and destroy your communities, in a sense. Thanks, thanks a lot, Tony. Sandy, uh, kia ora koutou. I'm Sandy Ramage. I'm in what we charmingly call Palmy Vegas in Aotearoa, <laughs> New Zealand. <laughs> It's actually called Palmerston North. People are very rude about Palmy Vegas because it's uh, like two hours north of the capital city and um, John Cleese, an English comedian, was very rude about it once. Um, my uh, role is a spiritual care and volunteer coordinator at Mid Central Health, um, and that's a hospital and regional health centre here. Um, I My background is a long way away in health, you know, like 20, 30 years ago. And then I retrained as an Anglican priest and work, and have worked as a chaplain for 20 years in schools, the military and in health. I don't work as a priest anymore, but um, I have a, you know, a broad approach to spirituality and compassion. I've been reading Karen Armstrong for 20 years or more because of her spiritual journey obviously um, and I think her robust scholarship around theological and spiritual issues 
um, which she brings to compassion, I think, or she draws out of that into the compassion area. Um, part of what I do at Mid Central is training, and I I teach in around spirituality and compassionate care essentials. So I've been doing that for about 10 years. So we just roll over these courses um, that I keep changing because I get bored um, for staff and anybody else who wants to come to them. Um, I think that uh, from my perspective, I'm interested in what Tony said about the 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 kind of ineffable, not able to be named something or other that if you don't have in, in a community, you're screwed. Um, depending on where you come from, you'll call it different things. Um, but I think one of the things I've come back to in work with um, health staff is, is the value of their presence. And that presence has to be grounded somehow in this development of compassion, both at an intellectual understanding, but but much deeper than that is the kind of lived something or other. Um, sorry, my phone's just going and I won't answer it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in, in how you might, um, you know, what, what you're planning to do. And I really like that we've got together as a little group in Aotearoa, New Zealand, because we could talk to each other. Good yeah, and there's a, and Terry, he's from Australia. I know that because he's part of Spiritual Care Australia. Yeah, have I got that right? Yes. Yeah, see? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, I think we'll be able to address some of this. Uh, but John, what about you? What are you up to? What am I up to? Um, a general description. I'm a bit of uh, a bit of fluff floating on the river of compassion, bouncing up mm -hmm. and down occasionally and sticking to things that are, uh, uh, are connected to it along the way. Where that leads me, I really don't know. All I know is that I, I seem to do best when I connect to other people wandering the same river, generally in the same direction. Um, uh, I look forward, I haven't seen it yet, to the the next or the final um, addition to the compassion integrity training, which has just been completed. I believe I wasn't able to make the live session. I look forward to continuing connections with Mahiati, Araha and Tony. And there are other projects that I'm involved with, um, some with the other people in the Muslim community, uh, something called Community of Strangers, which is working on the notion of uh, that identification of space and the nuance of connection that requ doesn't require we be the same. In fact, it might even object quite strongly to the notion of being the same, but says within that difference, there is a commonality experience. And that commonality is often um, through things which are really universal, like the ability to smile at, uh, at something that, you know, anyway, I go on, I get a little long. Terry, it is a joy. Terry and I, he was so useful in the, um, in the days after uh, March 15th when the Charter was looking for a way to proceed. It was Terry who, with great energy and wisdom, uh, help there it was a very awkward situation as you know to, with multiple political layerings going on but anyway so I sit in the space wondering what is next not knowing sure but um, wanting to help so Terry do you want to check in yes sorry I, I apologize if it's not kosher for me to to sit in on your conversation um, of course John and I and uh, Sandy and I have had previous contact, but it's been some years, so it's lovely to reconnect. Um, I'm currently in Bali, so the sun's just getting up. Um, I said to Marilyn, I'm a kind of a bit of a first world refugee at the moment. I don't have a home, oh, so nice. when I don't have anywhere <laughs> to go. I go somewhere where it's cheap to live, um, and Bali is that place at the moment. But um, um, I, I guess I was just keen to hear and uh, reconnect with what's happening in New Zealand. Uh, I'm on the Australian Compassion Council 
as um, the Compassionate Cities lead, and I live in the Gold Coast. Um, and um, as Sandy knows, um, have a really keen interest in spiritual care um, and uh, uh, particularly end of life care, which I'm also uh, developing with colleagues in, uh, in Japan at the moment. So um, yeah, just here to listen. And, and we have a very important year coming up um, because we're heading towards a referendum about constitutional recognition of our First Nations people and um, uh, their voice to Parliament, which is also a very kind of controversial in many respects, although it shouldn't be. Um, and so if there's any wisdom that you can share with us from your experience, um, if not now into the future, we'd really appreciate that as well. Thanks, Terry. Uh, Merida, um, maybe you just want to say hi to everyone. And... Yeah, yeah, just hi, and those that I don't know, welcome. And um, I'm program coordinator for the Charter for Compassion, based in Monterrey, Mexico. So this wow. is actually worldwide <laughs> yeah. call our, our, going around the our globe. Staff, our staff is in Chile and Madrid, uh, Mexico, and uh, the United United States, and. Soon uh, we'll be back in the Netherlands. So um, we, we really kind of span the globe. And so therefore we span the clock. Um, and uh, it, it makes life a little interesting. But um, gosh, we'd like to share some things with you. Uh, and, and John, when it comes to compassion integrity training, uh, I want to be transparent. We have no idea what's happening with <laughs> <laughs> integrity training um and so let me let me start with um you know right now we're we're in uh the second week of the 40 days of peace so every single day we have even on some days more than one program uh and this is based on the legacy of martin luther king and the last book that was published 10 years after his death, uh, which basically looks at the challenge that he gave the world, not only the United States, but that what he called the three evils, um, poverty, uh, racism, and militarism. And so what we have been trying to do uh, is to address um, those subjects, not necessarily in kind of a room, a uh, remorseful way, but to look at some of the, the kinds of uh, happenings around the globe. And so uh, here is, if you go to our website under programs, you'll see the 40 days, and then you can click on any one of those days. And uh, if you can't be present, and we understand that clock is not always on our side, uh, you can register and we can send you um, the recording of, um, of the day. So we've been working with the indigenous community. Um, and I would really encourage everyone on January, is that tomorrow? January 25th, yeah, um, that we have Cornell West. And I don't know if people in New Zealand are familiar with him, but he's an incredible, uh, he's now at Harvard uh, theologian. Mm -hmm. Um, and a wonderful spokesman for uh, the tradition of Martin Luther King. And then just like so many of you, we are celebrating and observing uh, the uh, World Interfaith Harmony Week. Um, and so if you, uh, we have that as a banner because it's, it's seven days of programming. Um, so that is that is certainly one thing that we're involved in. The other thing that's on the horizon is we are, um, last year we started for the first time 22 days of compassion campaign that led up to the Golden Rule Day. Uh, this year we're doing it 23 days leading up to Golden Rule Day. Um, and we'll have a, a major programming on April 5th uh, to commemorate uh, Golden Rule Day. Uh, which, by the way, is right now a resolution, has been for two years, in front of the UN to make it an international uh, day of um, observance. Uh, so that is keeping us on our toes. 
but I, I did want to see if, um, because many of you here, uh, two things are associated with health and well being and also with education. So I'll start first with uh, the health and well being. Uh, we are, um, I guess we have the first paragraphs in place for a memo of understanding between the Charter for Compassion and uh, Monash University in Melbourne. And Debbie Ling, who is on the Compassion Australia Council, along with some colleagues, has uh, put together an award-winning program on common humanity. And that will start with the charter in association with Monash in March. And so, um, you know, you can make certain to check our weekly newsletters. We haven't announced it yet uh, only because there's been all these other things. Uh, and even though we have a weekly publication uh, for our newsletter, it, we're just overwhelmed with how much material that needs to go into it. But if you are working, uh, in, in the field with healthcare workers. Uh, I think this is going to be a, a wonderfully exciting program. It has proven to be such. Uh, it has been offered. Uh, we have some board members who are vetting it right now. Um, and so, as I said, it, it, will, um, it will be available in, in uh, probably, I think it's mid-March. So that's something on the horizon. Then the next big thing. Yeah. Marilyn, can I ask a question about that? Sure. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in that, but I'm just wondering mm -hmm. how well does will that travel internationally? Um, the reason I'm asking is mm -hmm. sometimes American programs, bless you. Um, it's not arrive... an American. Wait, wait. It's not an American program. It's wait, who's Australia. Oh, out know. of Australia. Oh, well, the Australian is probably okay. But, but how will it travel across the ditch <laughs> in terms of, you know, its applicability to, you know, is there a way that we can um, mix and mingle and work with whatever comes out so is that it speaks well into our environment which is a complicated environment uh, you're you're speaking about new zealand being a complicated environment yeah, just or, like everywhere is you know I was gonna say, yeah hello. uh yeah but, I, I but think sometimes it, things that are kind of made for the mass market don't travel that well and we have to pick them apart and and if there's a kind of a problem with copyright and stuff it becomes problematic well there's no uh, I mean, the copyright of this whole program is Monash University. I mean, they they own it. Um, and so there's uh, there will be materials available um, right. that uh, participants will be able to avail themselves of. Uh, but for the most part, I think they have in talking extensively with Debbie about the program. It has been offered a couple times. The audience has been um, international and there is an opportunity because of the Zoom calls uh, with uh, after reviewing the material, going through the, the processing and everything to, to probably ask the kinds of questions that, that you might be anticipating. Uh, so my my hope is that it will do exactly what it says, deal with common humanity, um, and and to look at those commonalities and to broaden our perspective consciousness about the other, uh, and how is it that we can be uh, as sensitive as we possibly can in a knowing way to working and interacting with people who are different from ourselves. I don't know, Terry, if you want, I don't know how much you know about the program um, or if you have anything to, to say. Um, yeah, well, Debbie, of course, is a, uh, has a social work background, so she's kind of got the runs on the board in terms of practical experience and application, uh, but she's now an academic. Uh, she is a Tibetan Buddhist. Uh, she follows the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. Um, and she's very, very generous. Um, in fact, you know, the only reason that 
that there's a cost associated is, is, is because obviously of the Monash connection. Yeah. But um, her work globally is, is really taking off at the moment and being very highly uh, recognised. Uh, you know, common humanity is kind of a really basic kind of thing. So I know that some of the multimedia resources that she uses are from different parts of the world. Um, do you know Debbie Ling, Sandy? I don't think so. Would I have met her, do you think? Mm, not sure, but perhaps we can kind of foster that connection because I think okay. at a number of levels she'd be a good kind of contact mm -hmm. person for you and you could ask awesome. some of those questions. Okay, okay. that'd be cool. Yeah. But yeah. It, it's kind of academically robust, you know, it's evidence-based. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, despite her kind of spiritual uh, tradition and strong commitment to compassion, um, it it's kind of a secular program in that sense. Right. Right. And we're, we're considering how, um, after this first round of the uh, program for healthcare workers, or just uh, people in the field of healthcare, uh, we're looking to expand it to education as well. Uh, that won't happen for, uh, if uh, more, more than likely towards the end of 2023. But here's another thing uh, that we've been working on for months now, actually for years, um, and that is C-learning. Um, and C-learning is uh, social emotional learning. It's the program, the legacy program of the Dalai Lama. Um, and he basically has funded it totally. Uh, it is well-researched. Uh, it is operating um, as a hub out of Emory University in the United States, uh, but it has centers around the world. Merida will be in Colombia uh, next month uh, to work in with the, um, the Spanish-speaking world who are involved with C-learning. Uh, we just got uh, a, a notification today of uh, someone in Israel who is starting up the program. Uh, and the program exists in large numbers in, um, in India because it is funded by a major foundation there. Uh, and uh, we're, we're going to try hard to, to make certain that it makes inroads in Europe and in the Middle East and on the continent of Africa. So what, we would like in each of these calls that we're having with different hubs is to encourage um, you, if you are in contact with educators, um, administrators, school districts, um, that you would approach them. And again, it's already in our newsletter for the newsletter you should have received or maybe are still receiving this week. Um, and the first of five introductory courses or sessions, it's not fair to call them courses, uh, sessions uh, will happen in February. And we will go from February through, I think, June or July with those introductory sessions. And this is not a curriculum that you add on um, into the regular school program. Rather, it is a way of looking at neuroscience and how the educators and students are uh, really reacting to difficult situations, uh, situations that involve differences, conflict, uh, intercultural communications. And so it's, it's a way of helping to understand and for a teacher's behavior to, you know, to look at what's happening in the classroom, to help students understand the same thing and to help parents. And so we want to get as many people involved, and this is free, um, at least in the beginning for these five sessions, it is free. Uh, and it's in preparation to try and get international teams of educators to move on to certification in C learning, very similar to people who knew about compassion integrity training, but this is for educators and, you know, there's an awful lot of shared material that 
exists between compassion and integrity training for people who took it like John. Nigel, I'm not sure if that's the course you took or not. Um, I think Terry took uh, CIT as well. Uh, and in November, we will be offering train the trainer in C learning. And we're still negotiating uh, with uh, C learning about the price point for that. Um, obviously, no one's going to be uh, made rich because of this, but I, I have a feeling that while the first five sessions are free, uh, the full train the trainer will not be free, but it, we're, we're in the process of trying to raise money for scholarships because we believe so strongly that this is a really needed component in education. Um, so if we can, you know, encourage you to take a look, go to the, uh, I don't know, Merida, if you can put the page up uh, in the chat here so that people could have an opportunity to look at the, uh, the five sessions uh, and get people in, involved. By the way, the time we're doing every one of them twice in a day so that we, we get both hemispheres in a reasonable time period. Um, so that is really uh, an important uh, piece of what's new for us. The next piece is um, part of the work of Emory University and C Learning is also to promote cognitive-based compassion training. Now, this is a cousin of compassion integrity training. Uh, but it does have uh, a, a little bit of a different tilt to it. Um, as I said, we've been in conversation. The price point on this where it was extremely expensive in the past to get certified in CBCT, um, it's going to be very, very inexpensive. Um, they're even considering how they could make it as a $29 or $59 package. Um, and so that's a longer training. Uh, it's again, very much like um, C learning, but much more in, involved. And so please watch um, our newsletters for that. Um, and we are not we are not throwing uh, compassion integrity training under the bus. Uh, I, I can be very flippant here and say, we don't even know what to throw under the bus because we don't know what's happening with compassion integrity training. They have been revising it. They shut down um, for many months. There was going to be a reintroduction to the program in January. It's uh, now been put on hold again until March. So, um, and we've made it clear that, that uh, you know, we, we want to continue to work with uh, Compassion Integrity Training with Life University, but um, the last involvement in conversation was that the price point is really pretty high. Um, and so I, I can't imagine that too many of our members are going to be able to follow through, through with that. Uh, but when it's ready, uh, you know, we will, we will definitely consider offering it. And we're very cognizant of people who in our group, of which we have close to 40 train, trainers from around the world who are ready to go um, and continue with that, but their hands are tied as well as ours. So um, it's, it's just one of those uh, unfortunate situations that uh, is constantly on hold. So that that is just a little bit of an update on that part. Then um, we are, for, for people who know um, pro-social world, um, and I, I know that a number of people, especially from Australia, uh, Paul Atkins being the, the primary uh, writer of um, pro-social. Pro-social is um, kind of an evolutionary um, 
scientific program of looking at uh, how groups come together, how they create their agendas, how they are able to follow through. Um, it is based on the original work of Eleanor Ostrom, uh, who won the Nobel Prize, gosh, in economics, I think. Um, and it's, a, it's a very interesting and evolving program. In fact, one of our, <clears throat> we have a memo of understanding with ProSocial, whereas one of our staff people has now gone almost full-time uh, with the exception of her still being on board for 10 hours a week with us of uh, really working with ProSocial because they want to work with our compassionate cities and to really help ground compassionate cities uh, in the work um, that they're doing. So that's another thing that we are heavily involved in. And then, you know, I, I, I know I've done this before, but we have the map of co-creators and we desperately want people to use that map um, so that, you know, if, if you're working, Sandy, with a group of people, let's say how many people are in your organization, just roughly. Oh, a couple of thousand. A couple of thousand. Okay, we'll settle for 750 of those people to get on the map. Um, and, and the reason for getting on the map is that, you know, we're looking for people who have a passion for compassion, but also at the same time, who have areas of interest and expertise that they can easily locate one another. Um, and so let's say that you want to find out what's ha happening in um, healthcare or well being or palliative care in Canada, or you have a, a specific topic around a subject. You can go to the map, you can use the filter, um, and you can find people who are working or at least questioning uh, what's going on in your particular area of interest. And so um, I'm, go I'm gonna ask for people if, if you wouldn't mind indulging us. Many times, do you think we could sign someone up like Sandy or Nigel? Because I don't think they're on the map, are you? I think no, you're no, I don't know about the map. <laughs> okay, we're gonna show you the map. So, um, Here's the map with a lot of explanation on our website, but the map itself is going to, um, you'll see it in a second here. Um, and Terry, I'm guessing you're on the map already. Ah, I'm not on the map either. I might be a, a blurred line at the moment. <laughs> okay, okay. So here, we just, we started the map about, uh, I guess about six months ago. And um, it, it's really two parts. Uh, I can see that Mary does uh, the internet's a little slow today. Um, yeah. You want to share it? I, let me see if I can do a better, uh, get it up faster than you. Mm. Uh, uh, let's see if I can. Uh, oh, that's the Feast of the Soul. I forgot to tell people about that. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, I can. Um, I can share my map. Okay, here we go. So here's the, here's the map. And uh, the thing about the map is that when you register, like Sandy, are you open to doing this or I can pick on sure. you? Sure, you wanna, you wanna, yeah, should we do it? Yeah, no, okay. let's do it. Okay, so um, let's see if I can, okay. Uh, what's your email address? Sandy, you say N D E uh -huh. dot Ramage R A R A M A G E. Yeah. At uh -huh. gmail.com. Oh, okay. Okay. And you're in New Zealand. Yeah. Okay. Now here comes some, a really important part. Postal code. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, and the where it says the state region is not Auckland. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, what is Manawatu it? Wanganui. Wait, say that. Right oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. 
Okay. Uh, postcode 4414. Okay. And we can put your name in, um, but we don't have to. But oh, yeah, we we've already anything? got my name in, so that's fine. Well, I have. We could yeah. put my organization as well. Well, yeah, but don't worry. Just do myself for now. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and so um, now here you get to pick only one primary area of interest. And would oh. that be health and well-being? Oh, no, I'm much more interested in spirituality, really. Okay, right. well, then there we go. Uh, so personal evolution, universal spirituality itself, individual faith or interfaith. Well, just put spirituality because it's easier. Okay, great. Okay, then you can choose as many secondary as you want. Okay. Marilyn, you need to click spirituality and spirituality. Didn't I do that? No, then you go and down. Then, yeah, and then you go down. You have to then... click one of those. You mean one right the... there? No, the boxes, the little boxes next to. Okay, yeah. So... Yeah. yeah, there you go. That's, you know, you've done that. No, 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 go back. The spirituality. <laughs> that yeah, just opens it, Marilyn. That okay. opens it. So, yeah, and now take it out of interfaith. Take the tick out of interfaith. It shouldn't. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. Yeah, and put spirituality in. Yeah. Well, no. Oh, go down. Okay. There, there you go. That's right. Okay. Good. Well done. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, okay. okay. Oh God, this, are they This is where it becomes so interesting, doesn't it? How people it, it, it categorize does, but, things. Well, but just me, take spirituality and religion because that'll do. Okay. Oh, health and well-being as a secondary interest. There you go. Okay. Okay. Oh, but I'm also workers restorative justice. Can I have two of those? Yes, you can. Yeah, you can. You can have as many as you want. Uh, is there anything particular in health and well-being? And it would be integrative. Okay. Yeah. And so go back to justice and restoration. Okay. And ah, restorative justice. I work in that. Oh my God. Oh yeah, that's okay. the other thing I do. Forgot to say that. Okay. So now just to, just to help understand how this is set up that when you have both these interests primary and secondary they reflect the sectors of the charter and so when people come to the charter our whole website is set up in each of these sectors okay uh -huh. so here here we go now are you near your computer? Obviously, you are. Yeah, I am near my computer. <laughs> okay. Well, sometimes people are on their phone. Um, so here, you should be getting a, um, a message from us. Okay. okay. But you see, on the map, New Zealand doesn't even this is, show. This, is, this, this, was a, this was a joke thing with the comedian Reese Darby and Jacinda Ardern uh, a year or two ago, where the big complaint that New Zealand was off the map. But there you go. Oh, here. there it is. Yeah. <laughs> so there's one person in Auckland, obviously. Obviously. So you want me to see? Oh yeah, I've got a I've got an email. So okay. I confirm. You confirm. I'm confirmed. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. You so, might have to refresh. Yeah, I right. will. I'm just waiting for Sandy to tell me that you've confirmed. Have you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've confirmed, and a map came up. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. What should I do with the map? <laughs> the map always opens to where you are. So here, uh, now there are more than just you in New Zealand, and you're in Hi. the southern part. Okay, there's Claire. Southern uh, part yeah. of the North Island. Okay, oh, you're in the North Island? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's Pauline, there's uh, Elizabeth Parson, there's Sandy. Okay, yeah. so there you are. Now, oh here's, my God. now, here's a feature of the map. Uh, mm -hmm. You can go to the filter. Mm -hmm. And let's say that you are, you're really concerned right now about restorative justice. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you are or not, but at any, at any rate. Uh, so we have all these hundreds and hopefully millions eventually of people who are on this map. But I'm going to filter out just the people who are into social, uh, into restorative justice on, on the map. So um, did I do governance? No, I. Well, yeah, you picked governance there. <laughs> you know, uh, this is a real sign of my eyesight. 
Um, okay, so here we go. Okay, so here are the folks who are part, um, who have indicated, why is this not coming? I don't think this is really reacting right, is it? Maybe? It is. It is, so. okay. So there's one person in Ireland here, uh, Anne McKinnon. Um, and so one of the things that you can do is you can look at all of these different folks. Uh, here's Anum. Uh, in uh, India, in Northern India, and mm -hmm. she's into justice and restoration. And so, uh, you know, and, and you can go through and you could, let's say that you select on, um, let's say that you select, let's get somebody in the States. I don't know who Beth is, but we'll select Beth. Um, and we'll go down to Mexico and let's see who comes up in Mexico. My. Well, that's not Mexico. Anne Horst, she's in San Antonio uh, in the US. So these people have been selected. So the minute that you select anyone or you know a dozen people, you, yeah. you get this brand new send an invitation to them. And in this case, your email is going to, you're going to use your own email and you're going to tell them what you want, uh, help you want to okay. clarify okay. a question, you want to involve them in a project, uh, you want to share some ideas, and then you can send a message and then they have a right to say, okay, I'd like to answer you. Um, and so it's a way of, of people actually connecting in the global community in a way that they've never been able to connect. And one of the things that we are desperate about doing um, is to get as many organizations as possible to claim this map. We don't necessarily want to uh, own this map by ourselves. So we want everyone who's involved with Compassionate Australia or New Zealand or organizations uh, to take control of the map and to make it their own. So that people can be having conversations with one another and advising one another and you know, just seeking input uh, from one another. So um, you know, that, that is a big project and it is associated with something we call the wisdom book. And the wisdom book is a book, maybe, Medea, maybe you already beat me to it, I don't know. But if you could put the link into the wisdom book, you're, you're, uh, I know you're talking, but your mic is off. Okay, you look like you're looking for it. The wisdom book is also broken down into those sectors. And the idea behind the wisdom book is you have a wonderful program that either you've been involved in or you know of. And it's a very brief scenario that you write up and put in the wisdom book. And the idea here is that other people could grab hold of that idea somewhere else in the world or down the street from where you live and make it their own. So let me, and I always like to share this one story. I met a woman a couple of months ago and um, she is from a little town in the mountains uh, in um, between Ohio and Kentucky in the US. And it's a very small town, 2000 people or so. And she noticed that kids were out in the street. This is prior to the pandemic. Um, and they didn't necessarily go home at dinner time. And so you know, she started talking to people and found out, well, no, they don't eat as people don't eat as a family in this community. And so she got together a few kids and she said, let's cook for one another. Let's have a meal together. And so uh, she had 12 students who came in a, uh, a church, a community church, and they made a meal and they had a great time. And then she said, do you want to do it again? Yes. The next time it doubled. The next time it was 50 people. And before you knew it, it was about 350 people every Thursday. And she started out by paying for this by herself. But when she'd be in the local store, people would say, you know, are you cooking tonight? And she would say yes. And they'd say, well, let's help. You know, people would start bringing food and um, or they would help pay for it. And so this became a community event 
where students, it wasn't only for students after a few weeks, it became students and their parents and students and their grandparents and extended family. And then uh, the word got out and then the local sheriff from the county uh, came in. And so then of course they started asking him lots of questions and the governor found out about what was happening in this small town. And he came a couple times to dinner. So that was just a wonderful little story uh, it took a few paragraphs to share that story, but to think how, how many of us could duplicate that kind of project in our own neighborhood. I could do it right here on the road on, that I live on. Uh, people could do it if they lived in a, in a high rise in a city, could do it by floor. Uh, and you can imagine how quickly that could spread from one floor to the other floor. And there are just, right now we have probably a hundred stories like that. And so I know, I absolutely know positively that each person that I'm looking at right now has a story that could go in the wisdom book. And John, you have to have at least a dozen stories because you're a writer. So therefore... <laughs> The expectations are high on you. <laughs> <laughs> I was just listening that Nigel, you might know of Getfuller using the Commons uh, shared space in Christchurch where they, uh, it's just beautiful. They bring the people who are the most disadvantaged together for food. And uh, it, it, it's just beautiful. Anyway, it's, uh, yeah. it's yeah, a, it, that, that is something that the council's, it's council land operated by individuals it's beautiful yes so that's that's what we want to do we want to really affect that kind <coughs> of approach. um so okay we have a, i'm sorry i i think i might have dominated part of that taking away a lot of minutes but we have only a few minutes left so um any questions any anything what a great meeting just, just, a, just a very quick one from me. I'll, I'll, I'll sure, give you John. details in due course. I've mentioned before um, this verbatim drama that came out of interviews with right. people who were hurt in March 15. Uh, this is Ariana and Adam, who were at the Juilliard mm -hmm. School in New York. Um, they got an, an OK for the Alliance Theatre in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, they were in a, a competition and they're going to have a week of... of working on the play but it will only be one day of uh, a public sort of play reading of this um so i've asked her give me details of, of when she has the details about um uh ticket tickets and all of that kind now of stuff please, and, i've got that i'll get that to you okay and we'll share that with the folks yeah. in, uh, in atlanta with compassionate atlanta it's a really robust because uh, it's um there. In, in this case, it has spoken to people, I think I may have said before, but um, a family from Utah who lost their son to mm -hmm. suicide, uh, a woman who's the stage manager, lost her mother, somebody in Buffalo uh, from New York University, Tish, put it on. Uh, and he said this spoke to the people in Buffalo and the shootings there. So it's 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 taking that specific and, and work in um, talking to the universal of what loss means and how you deal with loss. So and I'll get the details out to you when the yeah, got Thank you. Um, because, you know, you think about the Broadway play, which I know had made its way to Australia fly away uh, after the 9-11. And, and basically that was stories of, of kindness that were uh, shown to uh, the passenger flights that had to land in Gar uh, is it Garland. Uh, and uh, Canada. Canada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, critically, too, with this play, it's people telling their own story, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and not the the appropriation, the Hollywood appropriation thing that we were okay. we were under the threat of. Um, and to be able to hear your own story in your own voice. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming. And as usual, if you have any questions or follow up, please let us know. And um, I think uh, there are a few other people who signed up for today. We'll make certain that they get this recording and uh, get yourself on the map. Um, what I if, noticed is that I, I don't know how to alter what's on the map. Is there a way? Go, to here's what you do. You go in and you deregister. Oh, okay, and then that's okay. the way to avoid any hacking. Okay, okay, that's yeah. fine.
Thank is you. it possible to share this uh, conversation with someone who isn't registered? Can I have yeah. the link and I'll pass it on to a few people oh, who, sure. yeah. Pass cool. it on to the world. To the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For well, listening. yeah, thanks very Lovely much for the you. opportunity. Bye. Yeah, okay. Bye -bye. I'll be in touch with the addresses I've got. Okay, <laughs> see you. Thank Bye -bye. you. <laughs>